Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Ah, blessing, folks. It's good that you've joined together with everyone today. We continue to look at Jesus' words as He was answering a question a couple of questions that the disciples had asked him. Remember the questions? Lord, when will these things occur, and what will be the sign of your coming again and of the end of the age? And uh, we see that in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. And in Matthew, he launches for two chapters of red letters. <laughs> so now we're starting to look at chapter 25 of Matthew. At the end of chapter 24, Jesus was giving uh, examples to give insight into what he had told them up in the previous 31 verses, I believe. <clears throat> He was given these parables where they would understand certain elements of it. Now, at the beginning of Matthew 24, we have a parable, I mean 25, uh, we have a parable which I dare say that most of us would be very familiar with. But I tell you what, this is a parable that has been interpreted in so many different ways. And I will tell you right now, I'm not giving you the definitive interpretation of the parable because I think the parables uh, give insight and nuance and understanding to a lot of different things. And the Lord may have you reading a parable and all of a sudden you see something you've never seen before. I do know this. If you come along and try to take every element of a parable and make it line up exactly what you think about your eschatology, your theology or whatever, it'll totally collapse. Generally speaking, the Lord is using a parable to communicate a basic truth. Okay, a basic truth. And the basic truth that he's seeking to communicate in these parables here is to be on the alert to be ready, okay, to be ready for when the Lord comes and when he initiates the day of the Lord. Because when he comes, he's going to take his church out. We call that the rapture. And then the day of the Lord, the Lord's wrath will be poured forth. So in Matthew 25, verse 1, here's what he said. Then, so Jesus is just speaking from chapter 24 through chapter 25. He's just continuing the dialogue. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flask along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered and said, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. You know, that's a powerful little parable right there, okay? That's a powerful understanding that the Lord was given about some things. And like I said, we could go through verse by verse and say, well, some people think this means this and some people think this means that. And we could do that for a number of episodes, as a matter of fact. But I just want us to look at the bigger picture of what the Lord was saying. And then, you know, you can chase other things at your leisure. The very last verse, again, he reiterates, be on the alert then. The same thing he'd said in Matthew 24, that we are to be on the alert because we do not know the day nor the hour. Remember, even the angels do not know. The Son of Man does not know. Only Father knows the day and the hour. And that's the interesting and wild thing when you consider the triune nature of God, okay? But he's telling us to be on the alert. Now, the previous verse, I think, helps give us some uh, interpretation of this parable because it says this. Um, well, I better back up a couple of verses to where you can set the context. Verse 10, And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. So uh, the virgins who were prepared with oil and extra oil went in. The ones who were not prepared and had to go off to the market to buy some stuff were shut out, and the door was shut on them. 
So the later the virgins also come and they say, Lord, Lord, open for us. The ones that had gone and got some extra stuff. Verse 12, but he answered, truly I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. I think that those two verses, I do not know you and be on the alert, are really imperative in understanding what's being said here. Because you have these ten versions, and they took their lamps. Five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. Well, why were they foolish, and why were they prudent? Well, verse 3 says, When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil in the flask along with their lamps. Okay? The prudent had oil. The foolish did not have oil. Personally, I think this is a picture of the church, okay? A picture of those who profess to be believers and truly are. They're the prudent because they have the oil, and the oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit. They have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. The foolish go about religious activity. They look good. They look wonderful. They got a lamp, but they don't have any oil with them. So the bridegroom is delaying. He didn't come. And they're getting sleepy. They go to bed. But at midnight, in other words, a time when you don't expect it in the middle of the night, behold the bridegroom. The virgins rose. They trimmed their lamps. All of them did. But all of a sudden, the foolish realized, wait, 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 wait. I, I don't really have the oil. I don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm really not saved. Oh, I'm very religious. I've taught many, many Bible studies. I've taught a lot of Sunday school classes. I've led worship. I've, I've served on uh, committees. I've served on elder board and board of trustees. I've done all sorts of things. But guess what? You were foolish because you did not have the oil. You did not have the Holy Spirit because you had truly not repented. You are a lamp, but you're an empty lamp. You can trim the wick. You can trim everything and look good, but you have no power to bring forth life and light. So the foolish look to the prudent and say, hey, give us some of your oil. <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. And the prudent know that. Verse 9, they said, hey, there will not be enough for us and for you. Just speaking in the natural, go to the dealer and buy some for yourself. And while they're away, it's when the bridegroom comes. And they go to the wedding feast and the door shut. And those that profess to be believers and thought they truly were, and they had done so many good acts, done so many good deeds, the Lord says this, I do not know you. <laughs> he says the same thing over Matthew uh, chapter 7, I believe, verses 21, 22, right around there. And Jesus forewarns us. He says, hey, many people will prophesy in my name and do miracles in my name and in my name do all sorts of amazing things. But the problem is, he says, I'm going to look at them and say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And these are all good things. Well, how could they be a work of iniquity if it was a good thing? And it's things that we seek to actually do in the might and power of the Lord. And the Lord says this, because I never knew you. They were doing these things in the name of the Lord. And often in the name of the Lord, the good would come about. The power of God would come. You know, the Lord can speak to a donkey. He can speak through unbelievers too. And these unbelievers, we see it like with Nebuchadnezzar and all that kind of stuff. What they were doing was they were calling upon the name of the Lord to do these good things, and the Lord would honor his name. But he did not know them, and they did not know him because they truly were not saved. Matthew 25, 12, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Matthew 25, 13, be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. The first thing you have to do to be on the alert is to be certain that you're actually and truly saved. Second Corinthians tells us to do that, to examine ourselves, to see if we are of the faith. We are to do that individually, to take ourselves before the Lord. I would encourage you to do that today. And then when you find out that you are saved, press on, be on the alert. If you're not and you're just going about religious activities, <laughs> today's the day of the salvation. Repent, confess, call upon him, and you will be saved. Um, again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.